Hello, this is a video um, for Sealand Open, but I am guessing that other people might find it useful as well. This is me going over the player conduct at a tournament here in Denmark, um, where I'm, I'm sort of explaining what you should and shouldn't do. So, player conduct for Sealand Open. When you go to a tournament, you should have functional equipment and it should be um, to the, the standards of game equipment for that game system. So you should bring, for Sealand Open, you're to bring your order dice. They should be unmarked and uh, not uh, destroyed in any way. Um, and I'll get back to this because uh, th there are issues with the order dice that Games Warlord produces. War games, uh, Warlord Games produces. Blah, games Warlord. <laughs> um, you should also bring your miniatures, which should be based on one inch bases with uh, three colors and a wash. And they should be WYSIWYG so that you can clearly see what they're supposed to represent. You should bring a measuring tape, which uh, measures uh, um, English inches. And you should bring a printed version of your approved list. This should include your national special rules and your special rules for each of the units. So that you can actually show your opponent what it is that you have in your army. So this is the basis equipment that all players should bring. On top of that, it would be nice if you had, um, you know, uh, a couple of your own dice, a turn counter, um, pin markers, um, all the stuff that you usually use at a tournament. But this is the bare minimum that you need to have. Good player behavior at Sealand Open includes stating your intention and then moving your troops. It actually says that you have to state your intention first in the rule book, um, but I know a lot of players who forget this, including myself, uh, at times. So try to clearly state your intention, then do your move, so that your opponent has time to react to your stated intention. Um, so, for instance, I say I want to move this unit of infantry over to that house, and my opponent then says, okay, but once you get to here, I will ambush you with this tank. Right? Also, make sure that your opponent agrees with your assessments of ranges. So, measure the range, show the opponent, so this is six inches, right? Um, and then um, move. And the same for dice rolls. Roll the dice, make sure your opponent can see them, say one, two, three, okay, I see four hits, and then you take the dice up. Um, this is done so that, because many of the players going to Sealand Open don't share a common language, um, and and so so in order to bridge that gap of, of language barrier and player behavior, because we maybe don't know each other in advance, then you need to be very, very clear in what you're doing all the time. Also, try to be gracious both in victory and defeat. Congratulate your opponent when they're vi uh, winning. Um, congratulate them um, um, if you're winning as well on a good fought game. Um, try not to be a dick at the table. That is always a good, um, a good policy, isn't it? Try to speak clearly and slowly in a common language. Um, I will not enforce that everything has to be in English if you prefer speaking because you're you're sharing another language. It might be Polish, might be Dutch, might be German, I don't care. As long as you share a common language, speak that language to each other at the table. Don't speak your native language um, at the table if you have an opponent from a different country. Um, and do not disturb other players during their games. So there is a tendency for people to ask questions, rules questions, of the players standing next to them. Don't do that. They are there to play a game. You're disturbing their game if you ask them questions. So 
um, talk to your opponent. Uh, I'll get back to that. And if you can't agree, call over a TO. Um, so don't disturb other players. That is good behavior. Now, what is bad behavior? Well, there are, there are two levels of bad behavior. One is cheating. Cheating will not be allowed and it will not be tolerated. If you're found to be cheating, then you will be disqualified from the tournament immediately. Um, your results will be zeroed and your opponents will get wins instead. And cheating in bolt action is mostly done in four ways. And I'm going to list them just so you know what it is that can happen. Um, not that I think that anyone is going to do this. Um, we will have enough TOs. We are three TOs. One of us may be playing. We are three TOs and we will at least have a, one extra helper on uh, some of the days to go around and make sure that no one is cheating. If you think your opponent is cheating, please call the TO. Don't start arguing, just call the TO, says this happened, and then we'll make a judgment call from there. Um, dice rolls. Some players may have um, dice that are cooked or that um, are just made in a way that will often cause them to roll ones, for instance, um, which means that at Seal and Open, we're actually handing out dice which you are supposed to use. You cannot roll other dice d6s than the dice that we're handing to you. Um, so that that is all dice rolls are made with those. Um, that's just one thing. Um, but another way to fudge dice rolls is to to not roll the dice enough. Some magicians can can sort of get a, a certain result with a d6 uh, by sleight of hand. That shouldn't happen. They should be rolled enough, uh, preferably in a cup, um, like a dice rolling cup, or uh, in the um, the uh, dice um, trays that we are supplying for the event. These guys. Um, and you should leave them for long enough that the opponent and you can agree on what actually been rolled. So some people will quickly t take up their dice and say, well, I've rolled two sixes. Or they'll even, um, I've heard about this, never seen it happen actually. Um, they'll even like flip a dice with a finger. That is immediate ground for disqualification. Um, as is if you fudge the order dice uh, draw. Um, so some people, including myself, have a tendency to hold the bag in front of them, shake and put down a hand and pull it up. Or even have a hand down in the bag and just fumble them around and then pull up a dice. No. That is borderline cheating. Um, if you do it on purpose, then it is cheating and you will be disqualified. If you do it accidentally, you'll get a warning uh, from the TOs. Two warnings and you're disqualified. So, so don't do that. Um, hold it out, hand up, wave the fingers, then put in and draw the dive. If you're even worse at this, you can put it on your head and pull out the die. Um, I'll try to do that myself. Please remind me. Um, there's also some, uh, let's say, creative stretching sometimes of uh, measuring tapes. And, and sometimes it's just because we as players, some of us are lazy. I do this all the time. Uh, we're lazy. It's, yeah, I'm ending somewhere around there, right? Don't do that. Make sure that you're within the, the 6 inches, 12 inches, however far you're allowed to go. Make sure that your models end up within that range. Which means measure from the edge of the base to the edge of the base. Um, right? Don't measure from the center or some head or some, like, because that will always fudge it a little bit. Um, so don't do that. Don't stretch the measures. Make sure that you're within. Um, if you overstretch them, if you give yourself half an inch too much, then that is cheating. And do not touch your models after you have moved on. If you make a move, you state your intention, you make the move, you roll the dice, and then the next order dice is pulled, then you've moved on. You cannot touch those models again. That is where they are. 
um, moving them, touching them, flipping them sideways, or just slightly altering the, uh, the, the line of the tank or whatever, is cheating. You're moving outside of your own turn. You're cheating. That will not be tolerated. So don't do that. First time, if it's a mistake, then it will be a warning. Second time, disqualification. I'm not having it. Of course, you can ask your opponent saying, right, my intention was my tank was going to like point directly at that gap in the walls. Now it's not. Can, can I move it? And if your opponent agrees, then it's perfectly fine. Then he's being a gracious, good player. Uh, but if you just move it, then you're being a dick. You're cheating. Then we have the gray zone, the bad player behavior. Bad player behavior can give you a warning. Um, as I said, two warnings is disqualification. Um, but, but won't necessarily give you one. It's up to the TOs to evaluate whether or not this is uh, deliberate or if it's just, you know, stuff happening. Slow play. Um, some players are slower than others, and playing slowly does not mean that you're necessarily uh, exhibiting bad player behavior. But if you're deliberately playing slowly in order to draw the time out so that you win, then that is bad player behavior and will get you a warning. If you're fast playing, if you're playing so fast that your models are uh, falling over and, and your dice are just being... then that's also bad player behavior. Don't do that. Don't play like uh, like like you're you're playing the time. You're not playing the game. Do you understand what I mean? Um, either fast or slow, both are bad. Play deliberately. Play obviously so that the opponent can follow what you're doing, and and make sure you pull in a timely fashion. Don't have your hand in the bag, like I told you before. Don't do that. Hand up, fingers wiggling, hand in. Pull the dice, preferably so you can't see the opening, right? And don't be disagreeable. Don't don't be a dick. Uh, don't uh, get agitated and angry. Don't be uh, unpleasant to play against. Um, this this is this is just a game. We're playing for fun and giggles and and yes, it will be competitive, but it's just a game. So try to be agreeable. Try to be nice. Uh, try to make sure that your opponent has a good time, even while you're beating him. Um, and this, of course, of course means uh, don't be a bad winner. Don't gloat when you're winning. And don't be a sore loser. Don't, I mean, be happy for your opponent. He just played a brilliant game. And ask him, could I have done something differently, right? Be a good winner. Be a good loser. Um, arguing with the TO, and I'll get a little bit back to this, um, once the TO gives you a ruling, that is the ruling. Do not argue. Don't argue with um, the TO giving you a warning. Don't argue uh, anything. Um, the TO is there to make sure that the game and the tournament progresses in a timely and orderly fashion. Um, if that work is disturbed by you, then you are a problem and you will get a warning. If that is your second warning, you will be disqualified. Um, and don't do pre-measurement. Pre-measurement includes everything where you use an instrument, including your fingers. I know that I sometimes, <laughs> I made a mistake in a radio program here in Denmark recently where I said you can sort of figure out what this is. Mm, that's pre-measurement. Don't ever do that. That's pre-measurement. So if you use your measuring tape, if you use a laser pointer, um, if you use your fingers, if you use your arm, whatever, that is pre-measurement. You cannot pre-measure. You state your intention, then you can measure. Um, you say, my tank will shoot at that unit. And then you figure out with your laser pointer whether or not you can see it or not. Um, so state intention first and then do the move with the measuring. No pre-measurement. <clears throat> now, once you get to the table at Sealand Open, there's this pre-game sequence that you should go through. Um, and I, we will try to make sure that you have between half an hour and 15 minutes of time to do this pre-game pre -game sequence. 
Um, you show your opponent your list, you tell them even about your sneaky special rules, right? You tell them everything about that list, so make sure that they know about it, that is good pay player behavior. You talk through the terrain with your opponent, if there are any pieces of terrain that you can't agree on how to play, you roll off for it. Um, you check your order dice against each other. Um, unfortunately, the order dice produced by Warlord Games are not completely similar to the touch. And if there's any dissimilarity, if like the edges are too sharp on one set, or if one set is smoother than the other, then you go to the TO table and you will get a, a bunch of poker chips, which you will draw from your um, order bag instead of the order dice. Um, this is done so that there is no possibility of anyone feeling what dice it is uh, that they are pulling out. You talk through the mission, um, agree on how to play everything. Uh, the mission is in the pack, of course, but as always, we know that, that you have to talk through the mission with your opponent because sometimes somebody have, have read it, the mission wrongly. Uh, you set up your game equipment, all you need, so that you don't have to do that once the battle starts. And then you shake hands or make a fist pump if you if you don't want to, you know, touch people. This is still the time of Corona, whatever. Um, but at least be a good sport about it and, and, you know, wish the other player a good game. And then your pre-game sequence is over. And the game can begin. I will call out time when the game starts and I will also call out time when there's like half an hour left, 15 minutes and then when the time stops. Once the game stops in at seal and open that was the last die that was drawn from the game. After that dice you do end of game sequence, end of turn sequence and the game is over. So what happens when you call over a TO during the games? Well, Mostly that happens when you have a disagreement about rules, typically. So what you do is you start out by clearly and calmly explaining what you think the rule is. Then you listen to, without interrupting, what your opponent thinks the rule is. Then you look it up in the rule book. And if that doesn't answer your question, you look it up in the fact. And if that doesn't answer your question, you call the TO. Now, once the TO gets to your table, he is just there to ensure that the game will continue. So the TO will listen to what each of you state, then he will give a ruling, and then that ruling stands, no matter what it is. Even if it's wrong, that is the way you play that rule. And that's because once the TO gets to a table, he's just there to make sure that the tournament continues. He's not there to be the best at the rules or anything. He's just there to make sure that you continue the game. So, and this cannot be argued. This is final. Uh, once the TO says, this is the ruling, you do like this, then that is final. No arguing beyond that. Uh, that will be bad player behavior. Look at the previous slide. So, and then the game continues. For me, the most important rule is remember that this is just you having fun playing around with your toy soldiers. Don't take it too seriously. Take it seriously enough. You want to win. Of course you do. I know I want to win, but it's just a game of toy soldiers. It's just a game. It's a dice game. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Um, so have fun. Have fun while doing this because it is meant to be fun. And that is the player behavior pack for Sealand Open. I hope you all enjoyed this. If anyone wants to get a copy of this for your own games, for your own tournaments, please let me know. I'll gladly send it to you. Cheers, everyone.